Welcome to our lesson on equivalent fractions and in this tutorial we are going to look at the whole concept behind equivalent fractions okay now as you should have known by now I like drawing diagrams because I believe it brings across the message a lot clearer okay now let's say we had three pizza here okay this is pizza number one let me just make a note this would be pizza number one pizza number one and this is pizza number two and I would have pizza number three and let's say in pizza number one joy pizza number one belong to joy pizza number two belong to Mary and pizza number three belong to Bob okay now to make this a bit interesting what I'm going to say is that in pizza number one Joy ate a half of her pizza. Okay, so that would be one out of two parts. So let's represent that on a diagram. Uh, that one out of two parts. So I'm going to shade. We have a total of two parts. So I'm going to shade a half of that or one out of two. Good. So that's it. Now, in pizza number two, let's say that Mary ate two out of four. Okay, so there are a total of two, four parts one, two, three, four in her whole, and she ate two out of four parts. So I am going to also shade that two out of four. So I'm going to shade that part. That's one part. Let me just shade it like this. So that's one part and this would be another part okay guys so this is another part that i'm shading so mary would have eaten two out of four okay total of four parts in the whole hence four is in my denominator and she has eaten two parts so i've shaded two parts now in pizza number three bob has eaten three out of six parts if you notice i have a total of one two three four five six parts and Bob is about to eat three out of those six parts so let's share them that's one part that Bob has eaten this is another part that Bob Bob has eaten and this is the final part okay so Bob has eaten a total of three three out of six parts okay now what does this mean <coughs> all right uh in class i will ask my students sometimes what does this mean and by that i mean who would have eaten the most of their pizza or who would have eaten the least amount of their pizza some persons would i would get response such as bob would have eaten more of more pizza than any of the other two persons because he would have eaten three out of six some persons would have said that joy would have eaten the least of her the least amount of pizza because she would have only eaten one part out of two well essentially if you look at the diagrams carefully uh all persons would have eaten the same amount because I've shaded if you look carefully all the pizzas are the same sizes right and I've shaded a half of this diagram and here I also have shaded a half of this diagram and here I've also shaded a half so essentially all persons would have eaten the same because 1 over over 2 is the same as 2 over 4 which is the same as 3 over 6 so you know what just let's look at the concept behind equivalent fractions and why they are how they are so let me just split the screen here a bit so basically here now what we have take for example joy's share so let me just make a note here this would be joy's joy's share and we're going to look at the concept why all values are the same amount now joy would have eaten one out of two okay uh-huh one out of two so that's the total amount of parts that she has eaten and then mary would have eaten so mary share this would be mary's share share 
and Mary would have eaten. And, and look what I am going to do now. I am going to take a half, this half that Joy has eaten, to show that there is a relationship between all of these quantities or all of the amounts, right? So I'm going to take this half because when working with equivalent fractions, one key thing to note is that all fractions have the same value. So I'm going to take this a half. So I'm going to take that half. And remember now that this is the half that Joy ate to show that all fraction has the same amount. What I'm saying now to myself is that to get Mary's share, I am going to ask myself how many parts did Mary eat? Mary ate two parts. So what I'm going to be doing, I am going to multiply my numerator by two. And I, let me just change the color a bit so that you're absolutely clear as to what I'm doing. I am going to multiply my numerator by two, given the fact that it's two parts that she had eight. eight. And what I multiply my numerator by, I have to multiply by denominator by the same amount. Okay, so essentially what we would get here would get 2 times 1 is 2 over 2 twos, I would get 4. And if you look carefully, Mary would have eaten 2 out of 4. And we have a 2 out of 4 there. So now let's look at the amount that Bob would have eaten. So down here, this is now Bob's amount. So um, let me change the color. So in Bob's amount, this is Bob's share. Okay. So again, I am starting with the simplest fraction. Okay. The fraction in its simplest term. So the fraction in its simplest term would be one out of two, which is a half. And I'm going to look at the total amount that Bob have eaten and he has eaten three out of six parts. So I am going and notice now guys, I am changing my multiplication sign and I'm using a raised dot. Remember in math, a raised dot means the same as multiplication. Okay. So what I'm doing essentially here is that I am going to multiply both my numerator and my denominator by the amount that he has eaten, which is three, three parts. Okay. So let me just do that quickly. So I'm going to multiply here by three, my numerator, and then I'm going to multiply my denominator by three. So I'm saying really three ones, three over three twos, six. And if you notice, I have already stated and you can see it on the diagram that he would have eaten three out of six parts. Now, why is it that when I multiply the numbers by the fraction, the simplest fraction by two over two or three over three, I, I get back this same, the same respective values. And it, it's a, it's just a simple explanation. It's a, it's a mere fact that remember, uh, and you can go back to check in our playlist on the identity element of multiplication. What I'm really multiplying a half by here, I'm really multiplying by two over two. And we would have learned that two over two is the same as one. This can be simplified to one because two into itself goes once and two into two goes one time. So anything multiply by one will all, any number or any value that is multiplied by one will always remain the same. And, and we could do a quick check here. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. Negative 2 times 1 is equal to negative 2. 0 times 1 is equal to 0. So anything multiplied by 1 will always remain the same. The value will never change. So the reason why all of these values are the same, even though the numbers may look different, is because essentially what we are really doing, we're multiplying the fraction by one. Hence, the values are the same. A half is eaten out of this pizza, also a half is eaten out of this pizza, and also a half is eaten out of Joy's pizza. Okay, guys? So therefore, we can state that one over two is equal to 2 over 4, which is also equal to 
3 over 6 and all of these all of these numbers they have the same value because they are equivalent fractions okay another key thing to note is that when you multiply a fraction both the numerator and the denominator by the same number which we which we had done here earlier it's the, that process or that method is called building up the fraction okay so what we what we did here we simply just build up the fraction by multiplying top and bottom numerator and denominator by the same value okay so that's just an introduction to equivalent fractions hope it helped you if you still have questions you may feel free to post your comments or ask your question okay bye bye